What's going on, everybody? This is Cody, Max, Zach, and you're listening to the Talk It Off Podcast. I love that the accents become part of it. I know. Every time, every time I do it, I say "off" now. Off. I did it once as a joke, and now it's just forever. It's stuck in there. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. Episode nine, the last episode of Single Digits. Wow. We, we can't go back. No, we can't. I'm honestly proud of us. I'm proud of us, too. Double digits next time. Huge celebration. Let's rent out a venue. Mm. Let's just make it for the 10, right? I w- I That's don't the get, big one, right? <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but I, when we started this, we talked about how cool it would be to do this live at some point. Yeah. That'd be sick. I've, like, I've oh. had ideas in my head about doing a live one. It'd be really cool. Is that and something that you, I'm, I'm breaking the fourth wall, that yeah. you, the listener, would be interested in? A live we'll podcast? Wait. We'll wait. Like a crowd? Like you're watching us do what we're doing right now? Yes. Go ahead. And They're not, they're not responding. Okay. Well, I guess we're not going to do it then. Yeah. That's fine. Um, today episode, today's episode, really excited about because we're doing something new for the first time. We've been talking about it since we started the podcast, which was actually uh, fielding questions from the listeners. Yes. And we reached out on, was it our Instagram? It was our Instagram. We, uh, we asked for some questions. So if you were listening and you missed out on it, we'll do it again and check it out. We've already looked through them and screen capped some favorite ones. So we'll be doing that later in the podcast today. Mm-hmm. And um, how are we doing today, guys? Oh, good, man. Good. Uh, I think it's exciting that uh, we're going to finally do the Q&As because that's literally how the podcast started. Yeah, it literally is. We did that Q&A for the, uh, for the live stream, and here we are. I know. Uh, we were answering questions and making that grown man giggle. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the genesis of this podcast. It yeah. was. And we were like, you know what? If we could make that grown man giggle, we could probably make some other people giggle. Let's get the gigs. Yeah. We want the gig for the gigs. I'm also feeling really good because I'm drinking out of my favorite mug. Oh. Tell us about that this? mug, Max. Well, listen. This podcast is brought to you by <laughs> that slurp. Are you are you tired ever in your life? <laughs> yes. Well, what if there was a magic bean that could wake you up? Introducing Set It Off Coffee. Set It Offy, if you will. Uh, the Midnight Dark Roast, available with this mug. Look at it. If, you, if you're not on the YouTube, you can't even see it. You mm. might have to zoom in, though, because we're not close to you. But no. <laughs> There's a little man on the, a little hourglass man on the mug. We, like, he... created a mascot for this, and we honestly really love him. It's sad because the, the Midnight Era is ending, and, and who knows what's coming next. So he might, he might die. He might die. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, we have to, like, push him <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> We're like, Please, oh. I've been good to you. Yeah, we're, like, we're like, sorry. <laughs> Why would I just got boy? here. Yeah, he's like, I've been good to you. And I was like, yep, it's new era time, baby. So like, just slowly shoving him. Yeah. He's kicking his feet back by his heels. He's <laughs> literally, he's holding a flag that says midnight. He's so enthusiastic. <laughs> we're like, sorry, we're like, bud. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming. You gotta go. <laughs> yeah. We like ask him to come in. We're like, hey, we gotta get you to come in. We're like, it's time to kill Tiny. <laughs> His name is Tiny. Tiny yeah. Oh, we were going to ask, yeah, what should we name him? Yeah, because he's an hourglass. Yeah, he's a little yeah. hourglass man. Look at him. Look I at like him a lot. His little gloves. It's but good. yeah, that, that comes out this Friday. This Yeah, so if you're listening, what day, what's the date today? The, J- June 23rd, The when this this upcoming Friday. So make sure to get it. Set it off band.com. Try the coffee myself. It's actually really, 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 really good. So do not is miss it? out. Is it actually? It is. I'm not just saying that. And I'm a coffee connoisseur. I'm so tired will. of people trying to sell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did, I, I don't even really like coffee, but uh, I, w- I would give it a try. I haven't tried it, though. You've, like, never? Ever, ever, ever. Like, tried coffee? Yeah, tried it. Oh, you know, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't like it. Uh, but I haven't tried our coffee yet. Oh, okay, gotcha. Because you. I don't like coffee. Yeah, you're not a coffee guy. No, I mean, if I got it, I would be like, tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like coffee... You might like it. So I don't want to. So go out and get this. Set it off midnight. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's another thing. Every time like uh, somebody says that, uh, every time I tell somebody that I don't like coffee or beer, for instance, they're always like, oh, you just haven't had the right one. You're a culprit of this. Oh, I am. Uh, every I am. time. Every time it's like, oh, you just haven't had the right one. Or they'll say like, um, they'll say like, it's like the beer is like fucking magical. Like this one tastes like Sprite. I'm like, no, it fucking doesn't. I do not want to have that beer. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you take a sip of it and it's like, oh, this is just a, like a lightly lemoned 
beer and it tastes you know what it is it's like i'm so excited about these things and i want to share it with you I know. and i want to be the person that makes you have that aha moment where you're like wait yeah i know i but do like it but it's been like 13 years yeah <laughs> <laughs> hasn't like, happened there it, it's either uh it's either like I'll say that or I'll say like, oh, I'll bet I can uh, put it in a context where you'll like it. Yeah. Like I think there were certain foods. Or maybe it was you I was talking about with salmon where I was like confident in my cooking ability. You did. You did. Yeah. You, you did tell me. I had a terrible experience the first time I ever had seafood. We were playing. What's that 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 big festival with My Chemical Romance that we played? Oh, uh, next big thing for ninety seven yeah. X in Florida. Yeah, we played that was a show with Shout My out Chemical next Romance. Next big thing. Shout out, out Fisher deal. and Boy in the morning. Fisher and Boy in the morning. Seth, Seth if you're listening, we love you. <laughs> but uh, they had catering in the back, and I don't know why I decided this was the day I was going to try seafood. So it, it, the catering had been out all day. It's an exciting day. My oh, Chemical you Romance. chose the That's true. worst, right? And I got tilapia, which is like their bottom feeders. Yeah, it's yeah. objectively the worst seafood, and it tasted exactly like it smelled. Yep, so. it did. It was one of those like if you've ever been to like a wedding or an event where they have food in those big silver like tins, it was that, but like it was just fish hanging out in like a quarter cup of water. Yeah. So and there was like no flavor or anything like Dude, that. Dude, funny. Shout out the catering company who messed yeah. that up. Yeah. <laughs> funny story about that day. What? Uh we were on we so we played that show. Yeah. Uh, um and we had so we were so delirious yeah we were so delirious in the morning but we uh because we had to wake up super early and drive there or whatever but we're in catering and there's a person that's with us that's a part of our crew and they're like known for being like kind of silly they're annoying as fuck though but uh <laughs> and they're being like kind of silly yeah. and this the, the he we're in catering and they're being silly and they're like, ah, it's like trying yeah. to get us to laugh. Oh. And right in that moment, Gerard Way walks in from My Chemical Romance and we're like, holy shit, he's walking in. And the guy, and the, the, he's still being Remember, all I, weird I was, and I was like, wacky. Stop it. Yeah, dude, it's one of the only times that I've seen you be a parent and like, <laughs> yeah. fucking stop now. Settle down. So yeah. Gerard Way just walked in the door. Yeah. He didn't even look at us though. But uh, Oh, no, dude. Like, uh, honestly, dude, he has such a presence. When he walked in the room, I was immediately like, uh, taken back. Could you uh, imagine late? Like, that was years ago. We were a very small band. Could you imagine now, right? We're like in line. <laughs> they're just, they just came back. We're like, hey, we'd love to support you. And Gerard was like, weren't you that band with the member that acts silly? <laughs> Your little crew member was doing a dance. Yeah. And we're like, no, 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 no. He goes, no, I heard the podcast. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. you. That yeah. guy was eating tilapia from catering. <laughs> he was disgusting. talking about how much much he didn't like it this is all adding up yeah gerard way is no like no a, i say gerard way is a huge talking off fan <laughs> i love the weird fans we've decided that we have for this podcast mm -hmm. it's him oh, yeah. uh the guy with the machete from citizen yes. oh yeah, Shout yeah. Out. yeah. Shout i haven't out. seen him in a while i hope he's yeah man with i don't want to say i hope he's okay I, but <laughs> but i do i do i do i hope he's fine yeah. hope he hasn't murdered people that's what i hope yeah yeah, yeah. oh man that's a funny story, though. I forgot about that completely. Dude, we were so we 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 had to get there so early for sound check. Actually, there's a cool first full circle moment that I have to get to oh. um, with this sort of thing. Um, but before we get to that, we were just standing outside of like I think the gate, yeah, waiting for the staff to let us in. And and I don't know what started this joke, but I think we heard like uh, a diesel engine in the distance. Yeah, and we came up with this scenario while we're standing outside of the gate that it's just. Uh, a diesel it's an actual full semi truck waiting at the top of a hill <laughs> for us to like get ready to open the gate so as soon as we open it it's just gonna careen down the hill and just hit us like a cartoon yeah and we thought that was the funniest thing on earth, but we also heard there was there was a guy checking mics. Oh my god! Did you go do the whole thing? Oh yeah, <laughs> we're letting them into our lives. Yeah. I I heard we heard a guy go, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we yeah but, okay, it was like six thirty in the morning. Oh, the we, sun had just come up. We had no sleep at yeah. all. We had just finished rehearsals. And yeah. Shit. And so we imagined that it was like, it was either an artist or a mascot, but we imagined it was just a walrus in a tub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a full aquarium that they put on stage and it was a, a walrus in like a Tampa Bay jersey, <laughs> like a rapper. And he's going, yeah. And there are people moving the aquarium back and forth. Water splashing everywhere. And there's everywhere. water going everywhere. It's making I hope you can mess. see it exactly how we see it. But the cool full, full circle moment, that's so hard for me to say right now. Is that um, uh, shortly after us, the, the band that went on was Neon Trees, uh, Trees, and they had that song, Uh Oh, I Want Some More. Yeah, yeah. I love that song. Yeah. And I just, they were such a great band live. 
And all I wanted to do was go up and be like, hey, I really love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I went up to their singer and I was like, hey, man, amazing show. I really love your songs. Just had to say it. And he was so kind. Yeah. Because like I've done that before because I always want to say that and I've been like blown off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I did not get that at all from him. And the cool thing is that on this upcoming record, one of my favorite songs on this record was co-written with him. That's so wild. Yeah. That's a... a Oh, I was just going to say, I have a a vivid memory of that performance. So obviously they've had so many singles and so many hits since then, but this was very early on in their career. And I believe they only had like one really, really big song that had been on the radio at this point. So they're performing and they put that in the middle of their set. Yeah. And as soon as they're done playing, a bunch of people leave and he literally called them out. He was like, oh, we're going to play the one radio single and then you're going to leave. That's cool. Catch you later. And I was like, I respect that dude so much. I fucking love him. That he was just like that open to be like, yeah, yeah. Fuck yourself. Like, Honestly, that's uh, how you got to be on stage. Yeah. Just be completely open and unapologetically yourself. It's, that is a really cool full circle moment. Yeah. That, that you like, we got to play that show. I mean, that was one of the first things we ever did. We weren't signed or anything. Yeah. We had to win a competition. Yeah, yeah we that. did. Yeah. And it's, I think that's what is so fun about the, the journey of this band is that like we all started out as just massive fans of all these artists. And yeah, then yeah. as time goes on, we get to just kind of hang out with them and work with them and, and, and just break that plane that was built up initially. I think that um, that festival was the first time I remember us having a line for signing. Because after we finished yeah. playing, we were the first band to play that day. We walk out because we want. We just wanted to experience the festival afterwards. And we go out, and there are people like, "Hey, can I get a picture? Can I sign this?" Yeah, like, this happens. Yeah, that was also this during is... our brown phase. Oh, okay, brown I don't know. Phase? I don't know yeah. if any if any like big set it off fans like or fans that have been out. It was yeah. like beige. Be- we all wore and- beige so yeah. unintentionally. Yeah. Colors, yeah. For yeah. some reason, well, the, I think okay. Here's what I think happened. If you look back at any photos of us from like 2010, 2011, yeah. it's brown and beige. However. So we were working on a shoestring budget, but we also wanted to look fashionable. Mm-hmm. So we all shopped at H&M. Yes, we did. And that just, I think, happened to be what they had yeah. in stock at H&M at the time. Dude, and so, so we all funny. unintentionally wore brown. Yeah, for like years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then also, like, we were, I would buy a lot of like suits and button-up stuff, but again, I could only afford H&M stuff. And I remember there was a band that we're friends with that would, their shirts looked nicer than mine. I was like, where do you get your shirts? And they were like, Express. And I was like... I can't do that. Like, yeah. and like that was like the top of the line mm-hmm. for me, which is so funny to look back at. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, I'm... you 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 used to wear a three piece suit on <laughs> so Warp Tour. Stupid, dude. <laughs> I think we, we did. We talk about this on the podcast. What? God damn, we're already doing that. But uh, how we used to wear like straight up like show our show clothes used to be like very presentable. Uh huh. And like the cinematics era, you would wear a whole three piece yeah. suit. I was wearing suspenders. Mm-hmm. It was like a whole get up. Yep. That we would you do. went full like uh, like cartoon character in that you <laughs> wore the exact same thing yes. every single show. I did, yeah, for like two years. Yeah. The whole cinematics era, I wore a, a black shirt and suspenders and black pants for the whole era. And you had I to buy duplicates. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was yeah. fucking dope because it was kind of like my signature. But then also, like, I never had to worry about stage clothes. Yep. Like, I was just like, I know what I'm wearing. Dude, That's part. I kind of miss it. I kind of miss the not having to pick your outfit out every day. Did I ever tell you I was in a ska band that had a uniform? Really? The first ska band I was in, it was... What was um, it called? It was called uh, Exodus 2017. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We were called Exodus originally. Full disclosure, it was a Christian ska band. And we were for, we were nobody at the time. Not like we blew up, but like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we were, they were just called Exodus, and they were like, there's already an Exodus. So they just tacked that on. Anyways, our uniform was black dickies with a black button-up uh, short sleeve shirt and checkered suspenders that's tight and honestly i loved it yeah i missed playing ska dude me too there was a level of like you could kind of do whatever you want it was very like you're you're having fun you're kind of making fun of yourself because ska is like a joke but the whole crowd is in on it with you like you're all just experienced this like someone was saying it's like uh, a bunch of misfit nerds having the time of their life someone i read somewhere that Someone was explaining ska as the noise that plays in a kid's head when he gets mozzarella sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's it. That's so dead on. <laughs> and also what's funny is like the uh, the theme song for America's Funniest Home Videos, very much that vibe. It's a ska song. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never but thought you've of been to, Zach, you've been to ska shows. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. you get the vibe. Yeah, yeah. I just never been in a band that played ska music uh, because I think it's dumb. No I'm kidding. <laughs> I've been to ska shows. I used to like the cir- the dancing in the circle and all oh, the shit. skanking. I yes. didn't appreciate yeah. it. I was just never into it, dude. I think that was the most fun thing about being in a ska band was that there was a dedicated da- dedicated dance to mm-hmm. it. Um, like like hardcore bands, they know they're gonna get a pit and people are gonna th- flail their arms and shit. And yeah. like ska band, you know you're gonna get a circle pit of people just like happily skipping. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is dope. I yeah. remember there was one time though that I went to a ska show and I was like 14 or 15 at the Java Junction. Oh, I know. My you, God. Nobody knows what that is. Yeah. But, uh, so uh, I, but there was, it was like a small local venue and they were, do, there was a ska band, there was a ska pit. And I was like 15, trying to be a rebel, trying to stand out, trying to, uh, so I would like stand in the middle of the, of the skank pit, of them like, go, uh, whatever it's called. The circle pit? Yeah. yeah. Going around. And the singer would start being like, attack the guy in the middle. And then there'd be like a huge mosh pit in the middle. And I loved it, though. And I kept doing it. And I think he hated it. But I was like, <laughs> I'm 15. Dude, I feel like we just opened up an avenue that we need to go down, which was being in crowds and pit experiences. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, I don't really have to. Or many. just like audience experiences. Like I, I had one. I talked about this on stream recently, but I have to bring this up again because it's so funny to me. Did I tell you guys? Well, remember when we were supposed to play? Well, uh, when we we're supposed to play the Less Than Jake show, but before Max, our drummer quit on us. Yeah. Like the day before. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't have an acoustic set prepared because we had no time. So instead, I attended the show and I went because I love Less Than Jake and I went to go watch it and I'm uh, in the crowd and I knew a good amount of their songs but they, they played a really long set and so they played some songs I didn't know yeah, yeah. and this made me laugh so hard um, I'm they're playing one of the songs and I'm like close to the front and I'm trying to sing along to it but I don't know any of the words so I'm trying to catch on and my mouth's moving and their bassist like kind of leans in towards me and he starts doing the squint like looking at me like do you know this and then he, he just he just shakes his head like nah Nah, you don't know it. Oh, <laughs> and I was man. like, no. But like, I, I didn't take it in like a dick way at all. It was just a really funny the, moment. Like, come on, you don't um, know yeah. it. A <laughs> member of, La- of Less Than Jake, gate kept Less Than Jake from you. <laughs> <laughs> That's another full circle moment because yeah. the song I Want You Gone. And then there's another one too. No, that's it's- Matt Appleton. And that's Real Big Fish. Oh, yes. well, I'm a fake fan. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, Matt Appleton, that was another one because I... I, (laughs) I'm just going to (laughs) backpedal. Hold on. (laughs) Well, uh, that's another full circle moment because I remember in high school, I took my school bus um, to to school. Uh, and But it was the worst ride ever because I lived 30 minutes away from the high school I went to. So I was picked up at 5.20 in the morning. First bus stop to get picked up, last one to get dropped off. And but I, I made these like friends at the front and one of them was a big ska fan and she made me like a mix CD of a bunch of ska bands and one of them was Real Big Fish. And that was like one of my first times hearing it. That my friend Brian showed me this album, uh, Cheer Up, because I was going through a rough time. And um, so I immediately fell in love with that band. And then when so th- to those who don't know it, Duality was supposed to be done by a different producer. Last minute while we're there, we, we drove our van from New York to Los Angeles yeah. and fa- had a non-refundable sublet apartment, found out that producer could no longer do the album. A friend of ours who we wrote one song with, we called and asked if he would do the record, and he said, it took like 15 minutes, call back, goes, all right, so we got this guy, this guy, this guy, and he saved our asses. One of the guys he got to help us out was Matt Appleton, tenor saxophone, pl- tenor saxophone player for uh, Real Big Fish, who not only co-produced some songs and, and, and worked on stuff and, and played horns on a ton of stuff, but I was very protective at the time of like the construction of the orchestral stuff. I, would, I, would, I wanted to be the only person to do it. For Wolf and Sheep's Clothing... Ironically enough, that being the intro to this episode, wow. um, he wrote the horn line for that. And he's like, well, check, check this out. What do you think? And I, my brain exploded. I was like, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. So he's worked on that. He did the tenor sax phone solo for um, I, I Want You, you Gone. Yeah, that, that one's so good. <clears throat> and he's just a great guy. And then he also asked me to do to feature on a kid's animated cartoon thing for um, I had to play. I, I, I was like the chorus of like, uh, we are the something of the oh, my God, I'm totally screwing this up. What is it called? I, I don't know what you're saying. Something about a plant cell, and there's like mitochondria, and they're talking about all sorts of things like that. It's ridiculous. Oh, can well, you find that on the internet? I probably can. Where, I want to let me look that up. Let's see. We don't have can. to do it now, but right, I want to cool. yeah, 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 see absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I want to hear that. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, uh, what time is it? How long have we been going? That's a great question. Twenty minutes. Are you trying to get to questions? Let's do the questions. You want to start off? Yeah. I love it. Talk some band history. Now let's get in some band questions. All right. Band let me see. Questions. Where should we start here? Okay, let's start. Zach, you want to answer this, this question specifically for you? Oh, okay. It is from Eva Hammond. 
Hammond too. Sorry if I mis if I mispronounced your name. It says, "What is Zach's blood type?" I've asked nine times now. Oh, uh, nine times. I have asked nine, nine times. <laughs> what is your blood? Is that doctor just yeah. needing the information uh, from yeah, you? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Being uh, coy, but you're yeah. gonna die. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Do a test. <laughs> uh, uh, I actually have seen those comments. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> the answer is that he has ice in his veins. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she <laughs> just float away. Uh, just float I wish away. I wish I would have. Uh, I wish I would know. I wish I would have known, but I don't. So it's all right. Yeah. I, I, someone just gave me shit not for that your recently. blood type. It's not yours. So like, don't, I'm not positive. It's mine. my blood. No pun intended. <laughs> don't take say. my blood. All right, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I don't know my blood type. Neither do I. Yeah, Neither like I, I should know that. If someone's like, you should know it. It's like if I'm in a position where I my blood type is needed, they're not going to ask me. Yeah. I feel like I'll be incapacitated. But you can like put it in your phone or I think uh, I don't wallet. want people going through my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're yeah. about to die. You're like, oh, no, no, no. Stop. 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 <laughs> well, what's that old TikTok? Bitch, I'm up. <laughs> I'm up. The fuck? All right. What is I don't that? Know. I don't know. One. It's an old TikTok. It's just a song about bitch I'm up. Yeah, it's about being up or something. I don't <laughs> know. If my girlfriend was here, she would know. She would know. Uh, this I is love a, her. This is a really great question. This is from Just Call Me Maddie. If you could fist fight any deceased historical figure, who would it be? Oh, <clears throat> I feel like we've had this. Has time. to yeah, be Tom. dead. Yeah, it says deceased. Uh, we, we always say uh, Thomas Edison because he's a thief. <laughs> He yeah. stole, he stole oh. all of the ideas from Tesla. Yeah. So we were imagining that you go back in time and just immediately like oh. come out of the portal swinging, which yeah. would be funny, but it would be even funnier if the second you came out of the portal, for some reason, Thomas Edison is ready and jacked. Yeah. And he just <laughs> folds you in half. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're halfway out of the portal and you just get uppercut by Thomas Edison. <laughs> <laughs> and half of your body is in his time and half of it's in 2021. I feel like part of the decision-making process is just knowing that you'll win. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dude, definitely for me. I'm not going to be like, oh, the, you know, somebody huge. I'm not looking for a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be like Andre the Giant. Yeah. I'm going to be like, I'm going to first, Tyson. I'm going to go on Google and be like average He's height alive. of somebody in 2000 BC yeah. and then be like, all right, that person's like three feet tall. Fair enough. This one I thought was interesting, and I'm actually not sure I know the answer. Um, the Real Post Malobe asks, <laughs> why doesn't Cody ever play guitar live? Um, well, I do. <laughs> I, if you were there, you'd know. Yeah. Um, I don't play it as much live anymore. What's funny is the band started with me being rhythm guitarist That's and what I was wondering, vocalist. Yeah. And then uh, eventually it just switched off of that, and, uh, and I had to due to circumstances, and I ended up falling in love with it. Um, but every now and then I'll, I'll bust out like the acoustic guitar. I played You Are Love for the en uh, encore for oh, that's a right. while. Yeah. I did uh, You Are Loved. I think there was another one. You did Bad Guy for a while. Bad yeah. Guy, yeah. I did Bad Guy for the acoustic guitar. I haven't busted out the electric guitar in a while because I never really saw a reason for it. And also, if I'm being totally honest, the the interaction with the crowd is my favorite part of, of performing live. And when I'm confined to a microphone stand – and I have to be using two hands for that, and I can't go out and like see everybody and high five and like get in the crowd. It's just not as fun for me. So I think it's a selfish reason. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Now you know your answer. Um, I love this next question. Uh, ATL Five Sauce Parks asks, "Can y'all impersonate each other?" Ooh. <laughs> Who's doing who? You're. I feel like you're the best at impersonations. Really? I, I feel, feel like, like you are. I feel like I got you down. Oh, I would love. I, I would was, love. We used to do this. I know, and I loved it. So Zach used to have this trait where, like, if he was fed up with something, he would just his tongue would go across his bottom lip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Uh, it sounds so that, gross. That noise is gross in the microphone. Yeah. Then, yeah. So, like you, it's you sitting on on the. I can see it in my head on the yeah. bandwagon chair. It's in the morning. Your arms are crossed, and you're shaking your legs. <laughs> And you're just going like you're looking around, and then if you're just like super tired, you're just not in any mood. Just <sighs> yeah, I don't know any phrases to yeah. say. Well, I love so normally if there's like a, a big, especially if it's like a heated conversation going on, Zach will be the one like he won't be right in the thick of it. He'll be kind of at the sidelines, and then towards the end, he'll be like, I, 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 I just feel like <laughs> he like sneaks his way in oh, there yeah. with the that. Yes, if I had to do a phrase, he'd be like. So are you going to uh, the, uh, Disney? 
And his name, so don't ride this. <laughs> don't ride that. It's actually trash. <laughs> a lot of negatives. Uh, uh, okay. Those are good things you do, teehees and hahas. Yeah. I just can't deliver yeah. them the way you do. I guess, uh, uh, who should I impersonate now? Oh, I'll impersonate Cody. Oh, God. I'm an asshole. <laughs> And when I impersonate my friends, I attack their character, their morals. No, I love these things uh, about you. No, I'm kidding. I, right. don't, I, don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess if I was going to do Cody, I would be like, uh, oh, my God, have you guys seen the new Marvel movie? Dude, I was about to say, it's, it's especially if you get really excited about something, but you don't want to interrupt yeah. someone. You're like, oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> and then you can see it, and then you're like, no, go ahead. And you're like, ah! This is all the thing. Dude, yeah. it's so funny because that's something I've been actively working on. If I get excited about something or if I want to talk about something, I want to do it now because I know I'll forget and my yeah. excitement is at peak level. <laughs> but then I know that I've had a problem with like interrupting people, so I will hold it back. Like, did you? Never mind, you, go ahead. You can see you it. You can see it. Every, it's like that picture. I don't know if you see like the meme of the guy like holding it in. That's you when you're yeah. so excited about something, but you want to be like polite. <laughs> and I, I do honestly listen. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, I'm absorbing, I'm absorbing, but I'm also compartmentalizing yeah. this thing. You I have can't to tell forget you. It. There's nothing worse than when you're excited to say something and then they're like, go ahead. And you're like, I don't remember. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, now you got to do Max. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? I did you. You do Max. Oh, I just yeah. did you. Max, do yourself. Hey, it's me, Max. Hey, no, um, hey, it's me, Max. That was really good. Um, what's what's something that you do? Uh, oh, I could do your, I could do your, uh, you on Twitch. Oh yeah, I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> really good at. You've had pra- so again. I think we've talked about this before, but me and uh, me and Zach used to share a wall when we lived together, and I talk really loud when I'm on Twitch, and so he heard everything. So go ahead. Oh uh, yeah, so it goes. Um, <laughs> Whoa, thank you so <laughs> many for the sub bomb. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is play some Stardew Valley. I don't remember if you ever Stardew played. Stardew Valley. I don't remember if you ever played that Great game. Inch. Drinking. Very inch. Uh, yeah, it's very inch. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I think you played it. but I did, uh, yeah. Um, I can't. I can't do a phrase, but I, it's just you walking in with either a bag of Chipotle or Jimmy John's. <laughs> uh, you're bad at impersonations, dude. First I you am. Cut me down. First you cut me down, and then you can't even do an impersonation. What? Well, I don't know any phrase. We don't have any like like catchphrases and finger. We gotta get some more catchphrases. Oh, yeah. My you, you used to have one, which was "You're a dick, and I don't like you." Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was because I said it in like perfect timing that yeah. one time. It was really good. I used to have a lot of catchphrases. I used to have. Uh, the you disc- invented sweet brag, didn't you? No, no, no. Uh, well, I, uh, it's the first time I ever heard it. Was was m- my friend at work? Okay. So, and he said that he invented it, and he's he came. I don't, I don't want to get into that. But for those uh, who don't know what that is, it's basically like when someone's just like, yeah, you know, I just I was out the other day and I saw. Um, you know, I was about to say Rebecca remains Stamos. Yeah. <laughs> Such a random deep cut. I saw Scarlett Johansson, and like she was like, "Hey man, what's up? I I saw you online. You're killing it right oh, now." Oh, dude, sweet brag. Yeah, Classic. and then you call your friends out so they don't stay all crazy uh, egocentric. Yeah, uh, but I was gonna say one of the other catch catchphrases that I have is that I'm one of the people on tour that like I push everybody's buttons. Yes, I like to have fun. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm just I'm just like trying to stir the pot. And yeah, like, yeah. Ah, let's have a good time, and uh, you know, just ribbon, you know, and uh, so a lot of the times. <laughs> It all comes back at me at one time. So I made up a whole song about being attacked from all sides. Yeah. Oh, the disrespect Respect is at an all time high. I'm being attacked from all sides. <laughs> and I was. I was being attacked yeah. from all sides. Dude, I, there is that. It's so, you know what I'm realizing is you have the most identifiable character traits. Like, like is, I know. Like there's a I, thi- I'm the only one with character. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. But there, there's, like, there's this thing that Zach has where if he finds, he'll find any object. And if it oh, can dude. make noise, he will find out how to make have it make the loudest noise for the longest know. amount of time. You also have Do no, you know why? I want to know why. Uh, it's because I'm fidgety, man. I've just been fidgety. My You're not whole trying life. to get a reaction. No, I'm always fidgety. I always, <laughs> dude. You have no idea how much restraint I have to not make more noise. <laughs> I could be You're making welcome. Way. Like, dude, there's so many times during this podcast where I've wanted to go, <laughs> and <laughs> I haven't, and I haven't, because I'm restraining myself. You're doing a good job. Have we? Uh, have we talked about the um, the Philly cheesesteak? Oh, <laughs> you're doing this. Do you want to talk about it? I mean, I don't care. It's yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. Okay, but I'll so do we it. were we were on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, and it was a late night, and we were in Philly. 
low key. We were in Philadelphia <laughs> and uh, we all had cheese sticks. Yeah. And at one point in the night, just ignore him. <laughs> yeah. Zach, Zach is like, hey, where's my cheese stick? And we were convinced that you had already eaten your cheese stick. And we were like, dude, you yeah. already ate it, right? So, and, and you're just keeping like, no, dude, someone took this from me. Like, someone stole. I was very drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, someone ate my cheese steak or they yeah. took it from me. I know for a fact. And we're all like, no. No. Dude. And then there was somebody, you ate it. there was somebody there, a part of the crew that was like, I watched you eat it. And yeah. I was like, you're lying. And I even, I, I even talked to you about it. I was like, dude, no, you ate it. It's fine. Yeah. And I know that I, <laughs> and I knew that I didn't, but I was too drunk to convince anybody. And I, I don't really remember. I remember bits and pieces of it because it was, it was one of those nights where I accidentally drank too much. <laughs> And I, I just remember at one point being in the back room with you and you being like, hey, man, so like you're very drunk <laughs> and you ate your cheesesteak and, and you're telling other people you're not. And then I remember you were like, um, you were like, um, hey, man, we have this other stuff here. And, uh, uh, and I'm like, oh, no, it's totally fine. 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 But somebody ate my cheesesteak. And then you dude, went to sleep. And then I went to sleep. And then you woke, woke up, up and you were like, someone oh, ate my cheese. Yeah. Yeah. I tore like, the bandwagon up again. And then. Oh, my God. Loki, All right, I'm going to go take care of my dog. Relax. The, the morning comes, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The morning. We woke up. Oh, you're trying to get oh, by? Oh, here we go. This was oh, the. the, the could have gone. <laughs> we could cut all of this, too. Yeah, yeah. This I like this. We should keep all this in. <laughs> this was the plot twist of the century in the morning. Yeah, so I woke up in the morning, obviously hungover, and because I drank way too much, and I went to go to my cup cabinet that's above uh, where I sleep, and that's where I keep my anvil, and I opened it, and lo and behold, a cheesesteak rolls out of it and falls onto the couch, and I was so hungover <laughs> and so mad that that just happened that I sat across from the cheesecake and... <laughs> And drank two bottles of water and went back to bed and left it on the couch. You just, you just sat there with your cheesesteak. Oh, yeah, I was so mad about it. But I mean, to be fair, like that situation would have been handled so much easier if I wasn't drunk. Because yeah. if I wasn't drunk, I would have checked my cabinets <laughs> first thing. I don't know how no one did. But what's crazy is, I, I, we, we weren't like ribbing you. It wasn't a joke. We legitimately thought you ate it. I know everybody did yeah. because it was because we were in Philly for two days and I had a I had a cheesesteak the day before. Mm. So I think people had the memory of me eating it the day before and applied it to that day. Yeah. What's up? Speaking of eat, <laughs> what? what just happened? Do you want to know why Loki was barking? Yes. So he was barking. Usually when he does, that's because he's knocked a toy under something. Um, want to know what the toy was? Sure. My AirPods. Oh, oh that's... Oh, my God. He, he bit the top of my case off of its case. <laughs> got it open. Destroyed one of them, and he was mad because he wanted to destroy the other one, but it was in my closet. For reference, the we had to pause this podcast because that like your Bluetooth connected to the AirPods, and you're like, that's, that's weird. That's why they connected. Oh I didn't even put that together God. in my head right now. I'm just so annoyed. So it's, what's ironic is that's where Shay is right now. She's getting one of her AirPods replaced. Oh, not because of him. She just lost yeah. one of them. <laughs> well, what? How long are we at? I feel like uh, we're we're at about thirty-five minutes. Oh, okay. So yeah. we can. Still I've got some, some more. Yeah, let's do some, some more questions. questions. A couple more questions. Uh, I just see. like it because it gets us off on a tangent. Yeah. yeah, yeah this yeah. is this is a great one. Uh, Rescue Trooper Havoc asks, "Are you all familiar with Nate Wants to Battle?" Oh yeah. Dude, Nate's the man. I wish I could hang out with him more. I've been trying to get him to text me because I got a new phone. Yeah. And now I don't have his number. Oh. Um, we were going to play like D&D and stuff like that. He's very talented. I believe he does voice acting work as well as yeah. uh, writing and he's going on tour. So check him out. He just did a cover of Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. He another did. callback to the intro song. And it's incredible. sick. If you haven't checked it out. Dude, Nate wants so to battle. Damn good. All one word. Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. L look that up on YouTube right now. Seriously, at least have it out. Like save it so you can watch it. Yeah, it's tight. He killed it. Um, let's see. Ask oh, yourself a question. Me? Yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. Uh, this one's also from Just Call Me Maddie. Says, uh, what do you do when you feel like you're in a creative rut? That's hmm. a great question. Hmm. You know what? I, I, I think for me, I need a schedule. Like, it's so easy. If I had to choose, like, I, I'm kind of stealing a little bit from a joke from Patton Oswalt, but, like, writing sometimes is auditioning for my attention 
between video games and TV. And I'm like, should I write a song or should I just go play Ghost of Tsushima right now? <laughs> and if, I think what I have to do is that's why another reason why I love co-writes is I'll be like, yo, let's write on this day at this time. Then I have to go do it. And like with anything that, that involves a rut, like if you get in a rut from working out, if you get in a rut from exercising in general, you don't want to go do it because it's been so long you're so far removed from it. But once you just start the action of doing it, you, the ball starts rolling your back into it again. So I think for me, I have to be like, all right, I'm doing it on this day. Yeah. And then I, I'm just right back into it. It is a weird thing to like put a schedule on being creative. Yeah. I do think the only way to do it is sometimes like force start it. Uh-huh. But – there are some days when it's just like, it's just not happening. Like, yeah, you, there are so many, like if you have to do homework or something, I feel like you could get it done, but the creative process is so different that like, sometimes you just have to be like, it's not getting done today. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not in the right headspace. Things mm-hmm. aren't the right way. And like accepting that you just need a day or yeah. a week or whatever it is. But like you said, the longer you go without doing it, the harder it is to then. You force become more start comfortable it. with not doing it, and yeah. then, and when we first started as a band, every song that was written was written at the spur of the moment of some of some thing I went through. So I'm like, I went through this. I'm going through this right now. I'm going to sit down and write a song. Yeah. And then at, at a certain point, you can't do that because you have the, your whole life to write your debut album, and you have 18 months to follow it up. 18 months to uh, two years. Yeah. And so then you're like, oh, I have to write. And then you don't have a choice. And as soon as you choose to make this your career, if you want creativity to be your job, you have to learn how to conjure creativity. Yeah. 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 And you can do it. You can, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes I think, like, let's say we're talking specifically about music, doing something else creative that is like more of a hobby mm-hmm. kickstarts that part of your brain without the expectation. Yes. That fear of like, I have to get this done, has to be perfect, mm-hmm. makes you not want to do it because yep. you're like, what if I mess it up? So you do something with no consequence that's in the same field, whether yeah. it be like photography or visual art or whatever, or writing a song just, you know, that has nothing to do with anything else. I feel like that helps a little bit too. Yeah, fear of sucking can stop you quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, I think that's, it's, important to just get it going. I love what you said about that. Like I was creating these effects for my Twitch channel has nothing to do with our band, but while doing it, I was just like laughing and having a good time. And you're literally creating something from nothing like that alone is so helpful. But yeah, for for another thing, I I don't even realize that I do personally is like journaling. So it's like, you know, like instead of, if you have to force inspiration at one time, I don't like write down day by day what I'm going through, but like I'll create song topics. I have a whole notepad on my phone called song topics and I'll think of like a title and then I'll write out about that. So if I'm struggling through something or if through one of these conversations, we talk about something like a good example of this was, uh, there's a song, whether it makes the album or not, that uh, was called, I think it's called bad luck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it all stemmed from, I cut my own belt loop off with scissors, <laughs> which is so dumb. Yeah. How, How did you, that would you say that's, <laughs> Would you say that that's bad luck or being fucking stupid? <laughs> it was one thing after the other. Basically, what I was doing was I had we were living in our apartment complex and I had to bring down like five things and they were all annoying. So I was trying to like make the most of it. And I came up with this what I thought was a good idea. I had to bring down um, this uh, like a tr- Christmas tree holder. And so I tied I got a piece of string and I tied it through the loop to my belt loop. And I was like, now I have two free hands. And it got me down there. It was actually amazing. When I came, when I went to cut it off, um, I, I wasn't looking and I cut my own belt loop off. And they, I think I just went through two other dumb things the day before. And I was like, I feel like I'm the king of fucking up. And that's kind of like where it started. But like I wrote that down. I, was, I didn't write that that day. So then when you're writing again or, or doing anything like that, you can go and reference like, oh, and then you feel it again. And then you like feel inspired again. Interesting. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it, I feel like that's – sometimes I feel like it can be hard to – especially if it's a really intense emotion yeah. to then go back and be like, what was I feeling like at that time? But writing it down I feel like is a you cool – You relive it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. What's well, um, next on the question? Let's questions. see. Next, next up on question. the question we've got – oh, this one's really good. Uh, Moth Soups asks if the <laughs> – I know. It's so good. If the band wasn't named Set It Off, what would it be? Oh man, I remember one chemistry kit or chemistry kit. Was that what we almost were? No, but that was one that was like an in. We uh, had a list. You had yeah, a we list. Had, we had a list. Yeah, we yeah. had a list. But I, I remember, remember chemistry them. kit was like a big one. I remember there was another one like without. It sounds like a kid that just has like beakers in his hand. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> chemistry kit. Oh, kit. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't remember that one. Uh, and then there was also um, uh, without lover. I think. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that was one. Really? Yeah. If you could change it to anything now, what would you change it to? I don't. I love our band. Me too. I think I, I yeah. loved it from the first time I ever heard it. I, I like, can't believe it. there's not more bands called Set It Off. Dude, when, I, when, I, when we first got our name, I was like really happy with it. And then I started like second guessing it heavily. I won't lie. Really? I was like, I was like is it good? I don't know. Is it cool? Because then, like, all I, could, all I could imagine with it, branding-wise, was, like, a firecracker or oh, fireworks. Yeah. And I was like, does it have to be that? And no. then as time went on, I was like, no, we have a really dope name. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, it fits us so well. We've always been about live shows. Energy. Yeah. And energy and, like, and it's just... Have it's, we ever talked about how we would rehearse our, our performance stuff? You and I were on a trampoline. Yeah, we've done... Mo- dude. Like, when we, it was you and I as guitarists. We were yeah. on the trampoline practicing, like, jump moves. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Wow. We once went out to an... Uh, uh, a baseball pl- uh, like little league park after it was closed with yeah. a boombox of our songs and practice guitar spins. Yeah, like we always really wanted. We the did a show. bunch of crazy wow. shit. I remember one time early early in our touring career, if somebody wasn't moving out moving enough on stage, it was like uh, it was like you took it personally. You, you it got was talked like, to. Yeah, yeah, it was like it was like he let you down in battle. It was like. <laughs> It was like, dude, I can't believe dude. you didn't put all. I can't believe you didn't put everything you had into that show. It's, to but me, to, like it was like every show. If one of them walks away, going, "That guy's having a bad time," then yeah. it's like that's all they're going to talk about. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, it is true. Yeah. So I joined later, right? And uh, seeing all that energy was like, this is amazing. So being behind a drum set, yeah, I if it felt like watching a war zone. I was safe. <laughs> I had this little bunker here, yeah, and I was watching all this stuff happen. And there was one time we were playing a show at the Orpheum in Tampa, a very small venue and a very small stage. Oh, the old Orpheum. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Andrew, who was on the podcast last week, was like our manager, and he was like he would help out on stage because we really didn't have a crew. And something happened on stage that required fixing, and he ran up to go fix it. And they get at the same time Zach was doing a guitar spin, ripped Andrew's necklace off. It got that oh, close to hitting him in the God. face. I know. Um, I can so attest like, to that feeling. But like that, <laughs> the fact that, then and, and going into it, we all knew like. If you're on stage and everyone's swinging guitars and running around, there's a very good chance you're going to get hit. Yep. But we need the stage presence. It was Dude, like that funny. dedication. Before Set It Off even existed, I was with my friend Ben. <laughs> God, I need to reach out to him. I haven't talked to him forever. Um, but we were in a band together in high school. And Why did you say his full name? Because I can't not say just Ben. I've always saw it, said his full name. Yeah, but now people are going to look him up. <laughs> We can bleep it if we need to, yeah. but I'm not too worried. He's a, he's a great dude. I am gonna bleep it. For okay, sure. <laughs> but we um we basically uh, he was practicing a guitar, a guitar spin in his bedroom. The first time I ever witnessed somebody try a guitar spin in front of me, it came off the strap. He didn't have strap locks. Came off the strap and zinged right by my head, like like two inches away, and hit the wall. Damn, that happened yeah. to me before my first ever show. Oh my, really? the second ever show actually, second ever. Show. It's it's a weapon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we played a battle of the bands, which your which your old band played, but Emergenza? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, we did Emergenza. I don't remember where what they the... make you sell tickets, and it's oh, totally yeah, a scam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one <laughs> of those. Pro tip for uh, for up and coming bands: if you have to pay to play, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. So I I was pl- it's before we were in a band or anything. We were, must have been like fifteen. But I did a guitar spin outside to impress some friends yeah. right before I was going to go on, and my guitar snapped and slammed onto the ground oh and God. split oh. the head right down. No, the that was before you went on. Yeah, like five minutes before. Oh. So what did you do? Uh, I tried to tape it together and like hope that the tuning would stay. It's okay. No, and it like didn't at all. And then I just saw a guitar. Uh, my dad tells the story. It's hilarious because I just saw a guitar that was side stage and I just grabbed it and started playing wow. it. Wow. And I don't even think it was a tune or like, <laughs> for the song. I was just like, I was always like, I don't know, man. In the early days of being in a band, I was like, I'm a, I'm a rocker. Like, I don't care. I don't care about song structure. I don't care about tuning. I don't care. I just care about headbanging. Yeah. I just care about being on stage. I didn't care about any of the other things. So like it was probably out of tune. I remember a friend of mine came to our show and he like giving us remarks when we first started out. He's like, you should probably buy a tuner. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I was like, you don't even play guitar. How do you know that? That's one thing I, I remember. Like, I just got a flashback. when I, I remember watching you play in your band. Yeah. And I remember Way how different. cool that was. Just Because, like, like, you were so into it. You like, yeah. were just so happy to be on stage. And that's Dude, what I, I loved about watching you play. Yeah, I was always really excited. I also looked like an idiot at times. I remember there was a while where... Uh, I would just get into the show and I just didn't care. And I was throwing my body any way whatsoever. Yeah. And sometimes people would be like, it looks like you're humping your guitar. <laughs> Dude, devastated me. Yeah, I was that's right. Devastated. Like, well, now I'm, I've lost so much confidence. Yeah. Thank you so much. But I was also like 15. <laughs> yeah. Like everything hurt a lot then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to say about the, the band name thing is I feel like, first of all, it's probably the most difficult conversation to have with other band members because mm -hmm. it's it like feels like such an important decision and to an extent it is yeah. but also it doesn't really matter like if you think about these very famous bands you hear their band names so often that it doesn't sound bad to you but there's so many popular bands with terrible band yeah. names and the product is so good and the music is so good the band name doesn't really matter so, Weezer we, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, okay like one of my favorite bands Blink-182 it's not a good band name but the band was so like the music yeah. was so cool that it worked they like, make it cool yeah Limp Biscuit is an objectively terrible yeah. band name yeah. and they're unbelievably famous Corn. So. Yeah. With a K. <laughs> With a K. So I, I would say like obviously it's it's important to have a name that you all like but uh, don't sweat it too much. Yeah. It's going to be fine as long as your music's good. Uh, let's do maybe one more. You want to do one more? We've got time for a couple more. Depends how we, – we ramble though, so we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find a, a really good one. Speaking of things not hurting you as much when you're 15, do you, I, if, if my dog ate my AirPods when I was like 20, I'd be like, oh, the world is over. I'm just like, it's whatever, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sucks, but yeah. you know. Yeah. You Life goes on. Awesome. It happens. Yeah. 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 Um, this one's good uh, from N Malika 12 says, how did you decide the singles for midnight? And also just like, I feel like people don't know how we decide the singles in general. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. the singles. Uh, yeah. The narrowing down is hard enough. We just got together and listened to like all of our songs and we still have to fill two slots, I think. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. But we actually went really well for us. But for midnight. For midnight. Um, uh, so like midnight was like kind of tumultuous is that the word tumultuous tumultuous chernobyl tumultuous tumultuous uh it was pretty promopulous yeah, yeah. i just remember promobulous. there was a lot of disagreements and yeah. uh i remember I, I think we were all in agreement it was high about, stakes mm -hmm. about killer in the mirror i yeah. think killer in the mirror was everybody was like obviously that okay yeah like chill out so uh <laughs> but then i remember we got into like the nitty-gritty and uh had to decide what's coming after that yeah and i, remember, I think lonely dance followed it up yeah but i remember yeah. there was a big fight about that it, yeah it's an interesting thing and i think it's different for every band but like you would think all right first single it's got to be w the best song on the album right and it's yeah. It's not necessarily sometimes you want to save it because mm -hmm. yeah. you want like the rollout to be better. So what your first single is, it's the first song that they hear. And so I think a lot of people are going to assume that's what the whole record sounds yeah. like. So there's all these different factors to take into place. There's there's so much psychology that goes into it when you think about it. Like you're like, do we want to give them what we think our fans will like the most? Do we want to give them a, a, of the songs, the one that we think can grow from there? So where they're like, this is great, but wait till you hear like single three. You're gonna be like, yeah. it keeps getting better. Yeah. Like there it's you really want it to to kind of produce longevity for your record, but you also have to consider not just feeding the people that came along with you from the get-go, you want new people to join along with you. So like that it's a it's the hardest part of our job. Absolutely. Is like deciding that because some we're fortunate and unfortunate enough to where we get to decide our singles. Yeah. yeah. Some bands or artists, their label just goes, this is your single. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we fully missed the mark. Oh, yeah. Times. I mean, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing wasn't a single. Yeah. yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what, what was another one? Uh, Sleep When I'm Dead wasn't a single yeah. either. Yeah. That was a very But those were all, those were all Dream like. Dreamcatcher, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. You can tell like as our, as the, as our career went on. We figured it out. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Like, oh, they like okay. these kind of songs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I mean, what's cool though is the, um, even though they're not, they don't get the music video, like the, their favorite songs survive. And that's mm -hmm. what I think is the coolest thing about it is at the end of the day, if a song is meant to explode, it's going to explode. Yeah, this yeah. is something that I feel like isn't talked about enough, especially in our current, um, the current environment we're in is that fans have more power than ever. So, yeah. um, and I don't know if, if everyone knows this, but artists can see all of their songs and how often each one has been streamed on yeah. Spotify and Apple Music. So let's say, hypothetically, we release an album and we had a plan for a single 
and some song that we hadn't considered starts blowing up streaming wise Mm -hmm. we're going to make that one the single so it's almost once the album is out fans kind of have the power yeah to change what has already been predetermined exactly um, and we're not the only ones that see that, like like industry people see that, yeah. like, whoa, this song's getting tons of streams. Radio sees that. A lot of the times, songs that go to radio were not the first single that came out. And not only that, their time goes by, and then they'll be like, oh, this song is really popular right now. TikTok's having that power right yeah. now. It, it's kind of crazy. There's so many factors that go into play. But the, the, the at the end of the day, you never know. There's no – if we, there was a formula – we would be following it to the T, but yeah. we have no idea. We're just doing our best. Over yeah, here. <laughs> we're also, I, I mean, it's it's a double-edged sword. I, I wouldn't change it for the world, but but I think we're, our, our music is very diverse, right? We have a little bit of everything yeah. where it's not, sometimes you hear a band and no disrespect to any of them, no pun intended, <laughs> but their songs all have a very similar vibe. You listen to it and you're like, all right, this is this type of song and we're all over the place in the best possible yeah. way. So yeah. it makes it even more difficult to figure yeah. out like, what do we want to highlight? Yeah. So, I really like that's what what's happened to us over the yeah. years, by the way, that we have the ability to write and release any type of song we want. We've had a poppy record. We've had a dark record. We've had experimental songs. It's mm-hmm. so liberating to know that it, everyone that's on board right now is on yeah. board for anything. And on top of that, even even the – like people will sum up a record. They'll be like, all right, Upside Down was poppier. That one had hypnotized on it. Yeah, exactly. They'll be like, all right, Midnight's a dark record. That has I Want You Gone. Yeah, that has yeah. Stitch Me Up. You know, it's we a try little to give bit you everything. Over. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, let's see this one. This one I feel like is a Zach question, but it's, it's for all of us, but I feel like it's tailored to Zach. Uh, Ciara, Sierra X sevenfold 92 asks, what is your favorite ride you have ever been on? Oh man. Everybody knows I love theme parks. I know my answer now. I'm 30. Um, (laughs) I'm trying to think my favorite ride I've ever been on. I don't know. It would have to be at different times because the first time I ever went on like uh, when I was really young and the first time I ever went on like Jaws, crazy, right? And like Confrontation. It's amazing. But then the first time I ever went on Forbidden Journey at uh, at the Wizarding World. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I I mean, I guess I got to say Wizarding World of Harry Potter just because it was so groundbreaking and I yeah. didn't know what it was going to be. And I waited from I waited for that park to open since I was like uh, 15 years old when it first got announced into to going. So, yeah, probably Forbidden Journey. Yeah, I'd have to go with any teacups ride. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's like, that... um, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> no, for me, um, I, I want so badly to go with the nostalgic answers. Yeah. Like like Jaws, I my nostalgia ties to that so oh, much. Oh, I know what you're going to say. So what, what, the story that I went through when my dad made me sit on the outside just so he could see me get scared like that's shitless by this so shark. That's so funny. Dude, that's something that I'm going to do as a dad, 100%. Yeah, He's no. like, no, sit right there. <laughs> no, I thought, I thought you were going to – I know what ride you are saying. Oh, yeah. So now I'm going with a, a, a fairly new ride that I, I'm not even a massive Star Wars fan. I mean, I watched the movies when I was a kid and whatnot and watched the new ones when they come out, but – I'm not like obsessed with the fandom and I got to ride rise of the resistance. And that is the best ride I have ever been on. It's hands down. Incredible. It was, it was like a 15 to 20 minute experience. Yeah. It's so immersive. I don't want to say too much because I think it's better to not look it up and just experience. Cause that's what I did. I had no idea what I was walking into Mm -hmm. and I go from one place to the other place to like the ride itself. And I'm like, this is fucking happening to me right now. Like it was just constantly jaw drop after jaw drop. Yeah. The animatronics involved. I just hats off, man. I hope that they bring more to the table like that. That's my favorite ride. Damn. I, uh, I, I, I do like roller coasters. I like the, the fast paced stuff. Obviously a lot of the newer rides, like the new Harry Potter ride. Uh I haven't been on rise of the resistance, but they've really like upped their game. Mm -hmm. But as far as a ride that I don't think I'll ever get sick of and makes me feel just good every time uh, is Haunted Mansion. Yeah, simple. I think that um, which the, one? The one in Orlando, just because I grew yeah. up there. I think that stomping grounds. Exactly. The and, and the 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 more like rides progress, obviously the animatronics have get have gotten better, but there's a lot of screens. Yeah. And when I can get on a ride that's actually like real things that you could reach out and touch you're not supposed to yeah but um (laughs) it really is immersive once you get in there and they did such a good job of creating this world that you're in and then i i didn't even realize until a couple years ago but it's a it's an entire story that like you end up lore behind it yeah so the idea apparently the idea is that first half of the ride is you're in you're taking a tour through this haunted mansion and then you go up to that attic 
and you fall out of the window and when you turn backwards you're dying i don't know if this is if this is canon or not really but the second you get down there that's when you're in like the afterworld the the oh. yeah or the underworld or whatever and you're Damn. seeing all the ghosts and everyone is out I love that. I don't know if that's uh, someone. I read that someone. And I was like, that makes sense. I'm just I gonna never, believe it. I, I, I actually don't. Ha- Haunted Mansion is one of the ones I don't know a lot about. So yeah. it could be. It's an amazing ride. I, I, I know Disney loves telling stories, so I wouldn't be. Surprised. I back that answer heavily. And just like like the, the the magic they were able to create before technology had really advanced, like making it seem like the ghosts were there with mirrors. Dude, the candlestick floating in the background, like yeah. it's incredible. Pepperidge ghost. Also, um, related but unrelated, Pepper. please watch me carefully as I'm tearing stuff down and don't let me break anything because not only are my AirPods broken, but now I just remembered something. While yeah. I was taking stuff out of the closet, I bought an ornament at Disney. That It's the, what's the, her name? Madam whatever in the uh, in the crystal oh, ball. I can't remember her name. But I, I bought the about. crystal ball from the Haunted Mansion oh, ornament, wow. fell out of my closet, head broke off. Uh, Today is a day of me breaking stuff, so I have to be very careful. Uh, yes. You have to be very Please careful. Please watch me carefully. I don't, wa- I, don't, uh, I don't want to end the podcast, but I have to pee. So. <laughs> it's actually right on the money. Right, oh, 57 perfect. minutes. Oh, wow. All right, cool. Bye. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. You guys sing the song. Well, before we do that, make sure to oh, pick yeah. up uh, Set It Off Coffee set and it these off. mugs. Friday. Setitoffband.com. Enjoy it. Sing us out, Zach. Oh, do 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 do